This is section 100 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain, read by John Greenman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Americans and the English by Mark Twain, read by John Greenman. Address at a Gathering of Americans in London, July 4, 1872. Mr. Chairman and Ladies and Gentlemen, I thank you for the compliment which has just been tendered me, and to show my appreciation of it, I will not afflict you with many words. It is pleasant to celebrate in this peaceful way, upon this old mother's soil, the anniversary of an experiment which was born of war with this same land so long ago, and wrought out to a successful issue by the devotion of our ancestors. It has taken nearly a hundred years to bring the English and Americans into kindly and mutually appreciative relations, but I believe it has been accomplished at last. It was a great step when the two last misunderstandings were settled by arbitration instead of cannon. It is another great step when England adopts our sewing machines without claiming the invention, as usual. It was another when they imported one of our sleeping cars the other day, and it warmed my heart more than I can tell yesterday when I witnessed the spectacle of an Englishman ordering an American sherry cobbler of his own free will and accord, and not only that, but with a great brain and a level head reminding the barkeeper not to forget the strawberries. With a common origin, a common language, a common literature, a common religion, and common drinks, what is longer needful to the cementing of the two nations together in a permanent bond of brotherhood? This is an age of progress, and ours is a progressive land, a great and glorious land, too a land which has developed a Washington, a Franklin, a William M. Tweed, a Longfellow, a Motley, a Jay Gould, a Samuel C. Pomeroy, a recent Congress which has never had its equal in some respects, and a United States Army which conquered sixty Indians in eight months by tiring them out which is much better than uncivilized slaughter, God knows. We have a criminal jury system which is superior to any in the world, and its efficiency is only marred by the difficulty of finding twelve men every day who don't know anything and can't read. And I may observe that we have an insanity plea that would have saved Cain. I think I can say, and say with pride, that we have some legislatures that bring higher prices than any in the world. I refer with effusion to our railway system, which consents to let us live, though it might do the opposite, being our owners. It only destroyed 3,070 lives last year by collisions, and 27,260 by running over heedless and unnecessary people at crossings. The companies seriously regretted the killing of these 30,000 people, and went so far as to pay for some of them, voluntarily, of course, for the meanest of us would not claim that we possess a court treacherous enough to enforce a law against a railway company. But thank heaven! The railway companies are generally disposed to do the right and kindly thing without compulsion. I know of an instance which greatly touched me at the time. After an accident, the company sent home the remains of a dear distant old relative of mine in a basket, with the remark, Please state what figure you hold him at, and return the basket. Now, there couldn't be anything friendlier than that. But I must not stand here and brag all night. However, you won't mind a body bragging a little about his country on the 4th of July. It is a fair and legitimate time to fly the eagle. 
i will say only one more word of brag and a hopeful one it is this we have a form of government which gives each man a fair chance and no favor with us no individual is born with a right to look down upon his neighbor and hold him in contempt let such of us as are not dukes find our consolation in that and we may find hope for the future in the fact that as unhappy as is the condition of our political morality today england has risen up out of a far fouler since the days when charles i ennobled courtesans and all political place was a matter of bargain and sale there is hope for us yet note at least the above is the speech which i was going to make but our minister general schenck presided and after the blessing got up and made a great long inconceivably dull harangue and wound up by saying that inasmuch as speech-making did not seem to exhilarate the guests much all further oratory would be dispensed with during the evening and we could just sit and talk privately to our elbow neighbors and have a good sociable time it is known that in consequence of that remark forty-four perfected speeches died in the womb the depression the gloom the solemnity that reigned over the banquet from that time forth will be a lasting memory with many that were there by that one thoughtless remark general schenck lost forty-four of the best friends he had in england more than one said that night and this is the sort of person that is sent to represent us in a great sister empire end of americans and the english by mark twain read by john greenman